Come on on. Good to see everybody. Wonderful review papers, even though I hadn't had a chance to respond to y'all. Great thoughts and reflections by everybody. Y'all get y'all first set of grades back this week with your first few quizzes and your first few reflection papers. I thought y'all would be excited about that. Oh, have you heard it? We still on mute. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? I said I thought you was hearing me. I was still on mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, yeah, great, great. First set. Of, we are officially halfway done with the class after tonight. We will be five classes in with five classes to go. We'll make up a little bit of last Friday's class <laughs> as we go in each class. And we get this, this week will be jam packed because we will finish off our Old Testament and, and next week, the final two weeks will be all New Testament, will be all church and Christ and the Holy Spirit and how all of this stuff comes together. So y'all are moving and y'all are doing a wonderful job. So I want to make sure y'all know uh, that I, I'm loving the interaction, the questions, the dialogue, the reflections. Uh, y'all, y'all making me look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> How's everybody Monday and Tuesday going so far while we waiting on a few more to get on? Well, this is my last day off before I go back in, so I'm dreading it. <laughs> <laughs> so you did it like me. I had to go back today after being off for four days, and Lord have mercy. I wanted to call in and quit the church this morning. I, I know that feeling. <laughs> you need that extended day. <laughs> you hear me? A recovery day, yeah, from the vacation. So I'm feeling you on that. And happy late anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. We had a great time. Really enjoyed ourselves. So thank y'all for understanding and enjoying that Friday night off. I totally understand. Y'all can go ahead and start dropping your prayer requests if you have any in the um, in the chat. I'm going to uh, give like we do till about three more minutes until five after, and then we will pray and jump into our lesson for today. So we're covering a lot of material. So I hope. Hope all of our stragglers can get on in the next few minutes. I know um, Brother Andrew was leaving the church late, so he's on his way home. He'll end up missing the first 10 minutes or so. And Reverend Alexander also had a family situation he was tending to, so I'm not sure if he's going to make it up. Everybody else thought I hadn't heard anything, so uh, we, should, we should see the rest of our group creep in. Okay. Oh, let me finish my thing so I can be ready. We're going to launch the quiz, too, here shortly. I'm on mute now, so I won't be talking while the quiz is going on. <laughs> oh, we got it. I don't, did we have the test yet already? No, we're waiting and we're gonna give it, we got one or two more minutes. Oh, okay, that's fine. I thought I had missed it or something, no, no problem. We'll do the prayer and then we'll do the test. That way we can stall a little bit for, for our folks that's coming in late. Uh, Reverend Harper? Yes. On your, on your quizzes, um, just so you know, I was just kind of looking at from the last one, um, multiple choice means multiple choice to us. We get multiple choices. Yes. Single choice means we only get one choice, but you can give us like different ones to choose from. Huh? Yeah, that's confusing. 
Okay. The well, the way when I the, when I took it the last time, I saw where I was supposed to give a single answer, but it allowed me to choose more than one. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. So I can type in multiple answers regardless, but right. you only get to choose one if I do. So yeah. So I hope some of y'all wouldn't wasn't picking more than one answer. On the <laughs> I did a one. I wasn't sure. Okay. But okay. if okay. you click single answer, single, it only lets us answer one. Let me but if you say here. multiple, it lets us answer more than one. But you can always give more than one choice. Okay. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, let me let me go back and edit that. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have shared, huh? <laughs> no, you definitely should. I, I'm sure enough appreciating you on that. That's good stuff. Yeah, y'all yeah, was y'all was getting freebies there, huh? <laughs> That's all right. Ladies, where we at? Yes. Yes. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up because I I was so confused by it. I, I thought that meant that gave me the option to give give you a multiple choice. So I know. Okay. Change all these real quick. Y'all only got five questions today though. Four e four that should be easy and then one that may be more difficult. start our prayer. Okay. There we go. All of those change to single choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me come back. Are we supposed to be taking the quiz? Yes. I didn't get nothing. No, 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 no. no oh, no. okay. I was editing. Now I'm about, we're about to pray. We're about to launch. Welcome. Welcome now, uh, uh, Dr. Cooper Sr. Uh, it's good to see you. I know uh, young Cooper, I was just telling him, is on his way home. So he'll be on a little bit. And then Sister Amanda just texted me and said that her training was running late. You, we know that initially she was going to take self-paced class because of uh, her training days, but had been able to make all of them. Hello, welcome, Sister Barbara. All right, good to see you. You have your sound? Yes, sir, I have it. Okay, all right, all yes, right. Sir. Good, good, good to hear you and see you, good stuff. Thank you. Glory to God. All right, y'all. We um, Sister Amanda's running late. We know Drew's coming, so so let's uh. Trip I her. think I think Amelie may be late too because she started a new job and she has training, so Great. she may be coming in late. Okay, well we're praising God for her new job. I, I heard about. Hey, Amen. I'm I'm, re I'm rejoicing with her over that. Uh, if no more prayer requests, then we are going to go to the Lord, uh, in prayer. Um. <laughs> I will pray for you guys tonight. Y'all will pray on Friday night. So let me let me go ahead and cover everybody in prayer as we begin, and we'll also pray for the ones that are on their way. Uh, Father God, we're thankful, Lord. We, we, we just come bowing before you, God, acknowledging uh, just how great you are, your sovereignty, Father, your power, your authority, your creation skill, God, in crafting and shaping each individual on this call, God, you made, created, and now currently you sustain the earth. You are God Almighty, and above you there is none other, God. And we come into this call simply saying thank you, Lord, for being a loving God, a God that sits high 
but looks low and intervenes in the affairs of men. You love us enough, God, to be concerned about our minute lives, Father, and for that, we say thank you. Thank you for creating us, for gifting us, God, for using us, Father, even for putting us in this class right now. And I thank you for the knowledge that has gone forth over this first couple of weeks, God, asking that your hand would be on each participant in this class. Continue to bless their mind, God. Give them clarity of thought. Give them clarity of understanding, Father. Give them clarity of speech and even of writing, God, as they prepare to write down and reflect on what it is that you are saying to them. God, I pray that they would learn all you desire for them to learn so that they can be used in the spaces you desire to use them. This class is just a conduit. Now open up their minds and their hearts to receive what it is that you are saying. Bless, Lord, those that are not on the call right now, those that may be in traveling, uh, traveling, those that may be running late due to training or class or jobs or whatever it may be. We thank you, Father, for the beginning, the genesis of this class, Father, but we thank you even, Lord, in advance for what we will gain together as we fellowship in your word over the next two and a half weeks. Now, bless our time together, Lord, and bless us that we might receive what it is that thus saith the Lord. We pray it all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, 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 so what, what we will, what we will do to make sure that the rest of our, our strategies can come in, I will say an outro prayer instead. We'll go ahead and jump in. Okay. All right. We got another, we got another entry coming in down there, but let's, let's jump in. So you guys had some great reading over the weekend and before we jump to Mr. Amos uh, we want to deal with the, the reading that we had in Genesis. So did everybody get a chance to do both readings? The Genesis reading and the Amos reading? Because together they are a little more powerful. Anybody not get to Amos? It's okay. We, we, it's, it's full disclosure. This is, this is, we, 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 we ride in truth together around here so it's okay. Just make sure uh, that you go back because we'll make some references tonight uh, okay. to that Amos okay. reading, but it'll be more towards the end. So tonight, okay. in the first half, I do want to focus uh, on uh, Genesis. And more than anything, did y'all get a chance to look over the paper I sent you yesterday on the covenants? Yeah. Anybody got a chance to spend some time with that? Have y'all ever looked at the different covenants, the differences between them? Did we, did we, did we read them with, with intent? Were we actually walking through, uh, kind of paying attention to the progressions of the covenants as well? Anybody? A anything you noticed while you were going through all of that? I don't think I did. No. Well, that that was actually what's going to be my question was what was yeah, that what that. you wanted us to focus on? Because I was going to ask what what when we read, how should we focus? And um, so I was noticing that there were covenants that God had with Abraham, and that uh, and we're still, we're still talking Genesis. We're not talking about Amos right now, right? No, 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 no. Okay, we're not getting to Amos just yet. So okay. We are still in Genesis. Okay, so, um, and then there was, what I really noticed was there was always a sign with the covenant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That was one of the things I noticed. For example, the, the covenant with Abraham, he had to make sure that all of the males, whether they were born to him or bought by him, were circumcised. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, no, and, 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 and not 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 just that, uh, but uh, you know what? I say I can't do that. That's why we're supposed to launch our, our quiz first. I almost gave you. Almost uh oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> you should have kept. You should have kept baiting. It. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 no. no we, we and, and, and nothing has been missed, brother Jane. They almost got me on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, matter of fact, that's what we actually gonna do. So let me let me launch this quick, real quick while I'm messing with y'all, while y'all trying to get me to give away the freebies. Yes, five questions. We'll keep this simple. Maybe that'll give uh, give our brother uh, an opportunity to get in, brother and sister, uh, an opportunity to go ahead and catch up. So this is five questions. Uh, don't overthink it. Most of these you should be able. Um, yeah. Yeah, you should be able to answer based on your reading. Y'all ready? 
three, two, one. We'll take uh, five questions. So let's go a minute per question. I don't think we need – most of them you'll be able to answer within seconds. But that gives you some time just in case you got to crack open your Bible where you actually have time to flip through. You only were reading – uh, 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 six chapters. Yeah. So, so, so you ought to be able to go through this one. Uh, and then the other one is actually on your, uh, your quiz uh, or the, the, the little handout. So I'm, I'm giving y'all freebies on this one. Let's get it. I'm, I'm launching the poll. Three, two, one, five minutes from now, six twenty. All right. Everybody see it? Okay. Yes, sir. I don't see it, man. I don't know what goes on whenever I click something, it disappears. The quiz disappeared on you. I'm checking these other pages as layers. I see who's the name of the priest? What Methuselah? Uh, 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 don't start that out loud stuff again, Catherine. Mute, mute, your, mute your say you're trying to give away answers again. Now, we done said that last week. There ain't no previous round here. <laughs> yes. Y'all got time, no, four, four minutes. If, if you don't see it, James, this time I ain't relaunching it, though. I'm going to have to send y'all on paper because last time we lost all our stuff trying to relaunch it. Everybody had to take it over again. See, I had I had put myself on mute till you asked the question. Then I forgot to go back on mute. Mm, almost, almost got us. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, I'm a grace filled guy. Go ahead, go to 25 after. I'm going to give y'all 10 minutes total to take this quiz. 25 after, though, that's it. I'll be right back.
All right, we're down to two minutes. If you need more time, raise your hand. So up the, um, over there in the, um, through the computer, raise your hand and let me know if you if the the six twenty five isn't going to be enough. Okay. All right. All right. What we'll do, Sister Amanda, you can stay uh, blacked out and continue to uh, finish finish your quiz. It looks like. Um, well, let me check my polling. Is everybody else down? Okay, seven of nine. All right. All right. I see y'all. Uh -huh. One minute y'all wasn't ready. The next minute y'all ready. I like that. Okay. Reverend Harper. Yes. I think uh, that last question, uh, you you did a little trickery there, you know. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, like baby, I like. I'm not finna fall for that trick because that's all anybody ever talk about is that one thing. But that ain't what the Lord was talking about. Right. Well, you've been oh, you on teaching before, is. so you've heard me. You actually, you got you. Don't, you're the only one on this class that can truly uh, be the one that cheated because you've heard me talk on this before. Yes. So, so I just we, remember some stuff. <laughs> we will, we will, we will cover, we will cover that. that, that, Mark, that. Can I retake it? Because I picked the wrong answer on that one. No, I want to retake it. No. <laughs> I knew it wasn't that, but I didn't, I, you know. <laughs> I think I did too, Drew. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna retake it. What was the last question? No, uh, about Sodom and, and Gomorrah. Uh and, and oh. the reason uh for God destroying. Sodom and Gomorrah. So no, no redos, no, no takesies, backsies, none of that stuff. <laughs> we're we going to have to roll with this one, but it will be a learning moment as we discuss it uh, as well. So uh, remember that that's one of the great things about the way the course is designed. No, no one answer, no one grade uh, is enough to, to alter you, but they are, it is great for, for conversation and for growth purposes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, I, I, I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Harper, hey, I don't, I don't know how proficient I am with them quick, but like when I would put an answer in and move down to that, it would, it would be moving. So I had to go back. So I don't know when I press submit. It was running away from you, Doc. No, seriously, when I would scroll down, and it might be just because of my ignorance on how to use this thing, but when I would scroll down to the next question after choosing one, it would still be moving as if I'm changing my answer. So okay. I'm giving you the heads of it. This thing is weird. <laughs> all right. Hey. Mine's too. These are all new tools. Look, hey. <laughs> hey, y'all don't hey, do me like hey, that. Don't, hey, don't, don't, yeah, hey, don't, don't do me like that. that. <laughs> It's not gonna show his name anyway. So yeah. I was about to say mine too. <laughs> hey, listen, it's been for the grace of God. I'm here, y'all. Yeah, it's been rough <laughs> on the boy. I got hey. you. I, I got you. Tr trust me. My, that's why. That's why the reflection papers count a little bit more. I like those more than more than the quizzes. The quizzes are just to make you understand that the facts matter. So those little details that you're reading do matter. So we don't skip over. All right, so let, let's get into our lecture uh, today, you guys. Um, we, we, we have done a lot of reading, and we've done a lot of groundwork uh, over these first three classes officially that we've been in. Friday, you had the reading, although you did not have the class on. So technically, this is the fifth class and the halfway mark. Uh, for the course. We are literally halfway into this, so we have a lot to discuss tonight, and the good thing for you guys is that the bridge between tonight and, uh, and, and, and Friday will be another small reading because you've got a lot of writing and reflection to do, and because we'll be halfway, the quiz on next week will be back to a 10-question quiz, uh, to make sure we're retaining the information that we're getting. So I went with the easy quiz because you had a lot of reading. Next week, because you'll have little reading, I'll go with a larger quiz. I'm just showing you all my 
my rhythm here, just so that you understand. Also, the reflection questions for this weekend will be guided. I will give you the question as opposed to a general, tell me how you feel. You'll have two questions that you are directly responding to in your reading reflection, okay? All right, so, so we, 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 we move past God's call of Abraham. We even, last time you guys had already uh, went through Genesis 17 and dealt with, uh, you know, God's chosen seed and, and all these things that we're walking out with. Um, hold on real quick. I got to get back to my... Y'all want the answer right mm -hmm. off on that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah thing? Y'all want that number five? Yeah. Y'all sure? None of these uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, pull up Ezekiel. First one, pull it up. I want to read them. Ezekiel 15, 16, and 49. Ezekiel 16 and 49. But Ezekiel wasn't the reading assignment. I, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> That's why. What did I say? I said, I said that four of them are easy and one of them is hard. And I made it hard because this is one of the most confusing and has become a the foundation for a cultural paradigm of hatred and phobia in our society, you guys. And so I, I, I asked that question because it's bigger than our individual lesson today. So, so what's the answer, sin? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 16 and 49 is the answer. Who want to read for me? Now, this was the sin of your sin of your sister Sodom. Do, do 49 and 50. Do 49 and 50. Okay. Now listen, y'all. This is this is God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. This is God speaking. So this ain't Ramarp ain't making this up. Go go ahead. It says now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor or needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them as you have seen. Hmm. Ignored that's stuff. That's pretty, that's pretty direct, huh? Hmm. They were not only uh, unconcerned with the oppression, he says they were a part of it. So nobody got this answer right, technically. So I, I saw wow. I saw where I saw where one, I think my mama thought she was cheating and partially remembered it as she <laughs> complacent about the oppression. No, no, mm. he's, saying, he's saying they were involved in it. And and, hey. and so and so I, yes, sir. I think that's when my answer jumped. Get all right, Reverend A. None of the above. None of the above. I know I chose none of the above, but oh, okay. none of the you chose either none way, of the above. I chose none of the above and I went back to the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I did the same. Huh? You you see, I, when you said you we had 10 minutes, I thought you were saying stop, so I submitted quick. Oh, no, no, no. no. So, so we need to get an A for effort. Y'all get an A period. <laughs> don't don't on this quiz. Don't worry about the quiz. So, how many of you have heard this before? How many of you have heard that this is the reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? No, oh, everybody it heard all, that it was it, homosexuality. It was right? homosexuality. Well, I thought it was because of you sin, but it was yeah. multiple types of sin, yeah, not just yeah. one in particular. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yes. on your question. Based off of Genesis, it only only one would fit, and I think that's I need homosexuality. And that's the one I picked too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but you don't even see God mention that in Ezekiel, and He specifically no. says this was the the reason for your sister Sodom's destruction. So so oftentimes, you guys. Uh, especially, and, and, and this is one of those things, I've talked to you guys, we began this conversation talking about the fact that we've been taught to see through certain lenses. Well, those lenses were, were white, gray-haired, European men. And, and, and this country was founded in puritanistic 
morals that focus more on the rights and wrongs of the people than the rights and wrongs of systems and institutions. See, it's a lot easier to say it's those gay people's fault than to point out that we're actually dealing with God condemning the nation at this time because he was saying your whole nation is overfed and unconcerned. That sounds like systematic oppression to me. Amen. That, that, he, he says you're neglecting the very things that righteousness calls for you to do, which is to care for the poor and the needy and all of those. And so, so right here, we get a, a glimpse into the Amos reading that we were supposed to be into because we are at that space where correction and covenants are running uh, simultaneously, right? And, and as, as correction for the fall of man and man's sin uh, uh, begins to, we, we begin to see this happen because we done seen them last week. Our, our lessons last week showed us all of man's shortcuts, right? Mm -hmm. All of that they tried, right? They, they tried the, the Nephilim thing, right? They, these are God's sons who have been cast down, and, and, and that didn't work. They were trying to take shortcuts, and then we seen, uh, you know, God, God come through, and we're dealing with the Tower of Babel, and that was something that they had gotten from other gods. So technically, this was idolatry because you were trying to apply something to your God that was from the surrounding Sumerian gods uh, that they were coming from in that area, these dark places that, that they were walking through, and so they kept trying to take shortcuts. So now God is saying, you're in covenant with me, which is where we enter the conversation today. But in that covenant, when you don't follow through with it, this is an extreme case. God says, this is the punishment. This is what it looks like. And he was talking through Ezekiel, who was a prophet, because the Ezekiel the prophet was warning them what happens when a nation turns against God. Go ahead, Sister Amanda. Unmute. Or, He's not even uh, muted. Yeah, you're not muted, but we don't hear you. What are you saying there? I thought you said something earlier. We got no, no sound. I get. I don't know if you got to come out and come back in because it looks like you have sound, but we don't hear you. Mm -hmm. well, Maybe you need to turn your volume up. Yeah. She said it is, eh? Is still? You want to try to come out and come back in? See if that'll help? Yeah. Go, go ahead, Minister Pope. I, I was about to say, after reading Ezekiel, Amos makes a lot of sense because there was a lot of God's wrath, a lot of destruction going on because, and it kept saying because of the three sins and maybe four. Okay, <laughs> like, y'all are just ignorant. Like, like he's just destroying everybody. Because of three, maybe four, and I'm like, because of yeah. three, maybe four, but now, because of that, the 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 numerous sins and the constant sins, and it was everybody. It wasn't just one one group of people. It was everybody, and he had to destroy them. Well, well, so I think oftentimes when we think sins, we think in the terms of individualistic, moralistic sins. You know, I yeah. sin, you sin. Uh, yeah. when often God was so, so, so that was that was one of the questions on there. How many people did He say He was looking for that that that, that was righteous? How many righteous would have saved the nation? Fifty people, huh? Fifty. Fifty-four. He said, "Just give me, just give me fifty that are righteous, right?" And that's sad. And righteous was not them abstaining from homosexuality. No. Righteous was living a righteous life, being the extension of who God was, which was a loving, caring, redeeming God. And ultimately, these covenants that we're making, this is what it's walking us into. So, so I don't want to get ahead of, I got a little video for y'all today. You don't just have to hear me talk. We, we get to watch a cartoon, y'all. How many of y'all? Y'all like cartoons? Y'all good? Uh, Brother Drewski, I know, I know, I know you, you, you like cartoons. Now, yeah, he, he got hands up and clapping. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Chime in, Brother Drew. So I do have a question in regards to um, when you say find me 50 righteous men, that's what it said. And I did get that right. But so when it um when what does it truly mean? Like, cause I'm noticing that's not specifically speaking about on an individual basis of, oh, I didn't um, um, yes. lie or sneak yeah. and creep, you know? So like, what does that, you know? So, so righteousness for the children of Israel came through God's expectation of them in covenant. And so that hasn't been explicitly stated broadly. 
yet, but it had been, it's been stated by then to Abraham. This is why Abraham is the one that's doing the negotiations, because by the time we get to this, he at least has already had his first encounters with God, and God has told him what he expected of him. So I actually, I don't want to answer that question. What I'd like is for our video to answer the question, because it's going to answer more questions than that, okay? Y'all re ready? Y'all ready to go in? Yeah, I want to, I got... Who had the hand up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, when you said that I had 50 at first, and I just want to clarify that now, but it went all the way down to five. Yes. So yes. really, any one of those could have been right if you really look at it. You yeah, got I it went wrong, Dave. Wait a minute. I went, went, I went to the wrong. least. I went to the least because, hey, for, for at least five or ten people, I say. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we we well, <laughs> well, so so here, here I, I think I had the word originally off in there. Did I? Did I have? No, the I, don't, I don't remember seeing that. You know, let, me, let me pull up the poll so I, I can you. read. No, I'm, okay, I got you. <laughs> oh no, you might be right. So you might actually. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I said how many righteous people did God did Abraham ask God to consider first in oh, okay. saving? In, in saving Sodom. So you almost talked me into it because if I wouldn't have had original or first off in there, I yeah. would have to get away with it, Dr. Coop. But I'm, <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm with I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So 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 let let's let's go through. This is a video on the covenants. Now I had you looking at five covenants. This one is going to put in three extra. My issue with the three extra is, is two of them are not stated by God as covenants. One of them is, and I'll tell you why I didn't address it, the Palestinian uh, Palestinian covenant, uh, because this is one that needs its own study all by itself. But we're going to go ahead and watch uh, watch our video, and then we will come back and talk, uh, pull up our, our chart on the, uh, uh, what's the names, and then uh, go over uh, everything that, that, that God is saying to us in this. Hold on, where my, where my video at? All right, y'all, hold on. I got to go back and get my video queued. I thought we was ready. Oh, we switched. There we go. Now we're ready. All right, eight minutes, y'all, but tune in because I'm asking questions and there'll be uh, 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 questions on the quiz. Next you know what a covenant is? A covenant is a contract or an agreement. In the Bible, covenants are made between God and his people. There are eight covenants in the Bible. Understanding these covenants is the key to understanding the entire meta narrative of God's purposes and ultimate will for his people. Let's take a look. The Edenic Covenant. The key word here is the word rule. In Genesis 2.15, right after God had created man, he put him in the garden and told him to care for it. From the very beginning, man was to rule and enjoy him forever. Psalm 8 says, you make him to rule over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet. David was saying, you've made something from nothing. You're powerful. And you've made man ruler over your creation to show your glory. But man rebelled and forsook his position. We all know the story. Adam ate from the tree that God told him not to eat and brought sin into the world. The penalty for sin was death because God would not let man live eternally in his sin. So man lost it. We will need a second Adam to reclaim God's original purpose for man to rule. But only after he redeems man from his sin. Which brings us to the next covenant. Number two is the Adamic covenant. The chief word here is the word redemption. So because of Adam's sin, God curses man, animals, and the earth, so it will yearn for his redemption. So immediately after sin occurs, God tells us how he will deal with it. Genesis 3.15, God reveals his unconditional covenant and his curse upon the serpent by saying, I will put enmity between you and your seed, meaning Satan, and the woman's seed, meaning Jesus, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Satan will inflict minor damage on Christ through crucifixion, but Christ will inflict major damage on Satan by defeating the curse of death. 
Jesus is the only one who can accomplish this because he will be born of the Holy Spirit, incarnated, going around the curse, born without man's sin. As time went on, man's newfound sin deteriorated into a sick and depraved wasteland of evil until every intent and thought on his heart was wicked. And God said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created. And that took place in Genesis 6, verse 7. Number three is called the Noahic Covenant. The key word here is the word restraint. This covenant shows an attribute of God that we can be grateful for, and that is his restraint. For instead of blotting out the entire human race, he preserved Noah and all the animals in the ark and restrained his wrath, partly because of his mercy, but also partly because of his covenants, which he cannot change. Then in Genesis 8, 21, God makes a covenant that he will never again destroy all living creatures and gave Noah and the earth the rainbow as a sign of that covenant promise. But man would soon turn back to sin in an effort to make a name for himself at the Tower of Babel, where we see the introduction of other gods. So God scattered them among the nations to begin a new nation for himself. Our fourth covenant is called the Abrahamic covenant. The key word here is the word restore. In Genesis 12, 1, 2, and 3, God chooses one man through whom he will restore his people to himself, Abraham. And in that covenant, God promises him three things. In verse 1, he promises him land. In verse 2, he promises him a people. And in verse 3, he promises him blessing. The land was Israel. The people were the Jews. And the blessing is they will be the touchstone of God towards all the people of every nation to know of him through them. To bless those who bless you and to curse those who curse you. And God made good on his promise too. Because as the nation grew greatly, Egypt enslaved them and God saw their affliction and cursed Egypt greatly through Moses and brought them safely out in the Exodus. Our fifth covenant is called the Mosaic Covenant. Key word here is the word reveal. Now that Israel had grown into a great multitude of people, God brought them to Mount Sinai to make a covenant. This covenant was to serve as a temporary supervisor, teaching the righteous standards of God and reveal man's sin until the coming of Christ. In Leviticus 26, God tells Israel in verse 1, have no other gods. Verse 2, keep the Sabbath. Verse 3, keep his laws and commandments. So while the first four covenants were only up to God, the Mosaic Covenant has conditions for man, and through those conditions, man will have his sin revealed, and he will see the need for a sacrifice. The Mosaic Covenant was temporary until Christ fulfilled every requirement of it, living perfectly and dying as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of all who believed. The Sixth Covenant is called the Palestinian Covenant. Its key word is return. Well, the old guys died and the young guys forgot the Mosaic Covenant and didn't keep God's laws. So in Deuteronomy 29, God tells them that they will not keep his covenant. And in Deuteronomy 30, verse 2 and 3, he tells them, come back to me. Because when they do, and verse 4 and 5 reminds them of what God promised in the Abrahamic Covenant. Land, seed, and blessing. In verse 6, something more. A new heart which hasn't happened yet until Christ returns and gathers them to a new land. The seventh covenant is called the Davidic covenant. The key word here is the word reign. After 500 years of judges chaotically administering God's law, God appointed a king named David. King David loved the Lord with all of his heart. And in 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16, God makes a covenant with David that he will give David's son Solomon three things. Number one, a throne. Number two, a house. And number three, a kingdom forever. After David died, Solomon received the benefit of this covenant with the most prosperous kingdom in Israel's history. But the covenant promise was forever, and Solomon eventually died. So this covenant had a second meaning, to reveal David's greater son of another nature, Jesus Christ, who would be from David's royal line 490 years later. The Eighth Covenant was called the New Covenant. Key word here is the word regenerate. After David and after many evil kings in Israel and Judah, God sends Israel into exile under Babylon. 
But before he does, he promises them in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27 through verse 34, that he will bring them back one day and give them, and God invents a term here, he will give them a new covenant. In verse 32, God says they have been like babies needing their hand held. But in verse 33, one day they will be sons with new hearts, like a Jewish boy going through bar mitzvah becoming a man. This is Israel's bar mitzvah. The law was for babies, teaching them about their sin. Grace is for sons of God, with the law written on their hearts. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It hasn't happened to Israel yet, but Jesus spoke of this new covenant at the Last Supper for the church as we were grafted in. So we got their king and their covenant. And in verse 34, God will forgive everything they've done. The Christian's purpose doesn't cast aside Israel but makes Israel jealous until the second coming of Jesus when all the covenants will be fulfilled and God's purpose from the very beginning for his children to rule and enjoy him forever will be accomplished once and for all. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are the covenants of God. Amen. All right, so... I know some of y'all got to glance over, but I want to talk a little bit about the differences in uh, the covenants because there are some differences in what we're seeing. So which covenant are we living in right now? Anybody? The new one. We are in the new covenant. You are correct. That is correct. Hold on. Let me get this up here. So that new covenant is the messianic covenant, right? This this is this is this is royal grant. It is one way, but we see. I was asking y'all some of the differences because one of these stands out uh, that it is not like the other. Is that correct? Can anybody see the one that stands out that ain't like the other? One is only temporary. Well, that yeah, but 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 not 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 on, not only that. When each one of them was used in time, they were all building on one another. One of them beyond temporary. There's there's something else about this one that stands out in the middle of all of these others. The new one replaces um, the old covenant. Um, he said he didn't come to abolish, he came to fulfill. So, so, so Jesus didn't see it that way. He, he saw, he saw this as a fulfilling of what had only been understood partially, uh, by the previous, uh, in, uh individuals that were involved in covenant. So, so one more thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a hint. Look under the types of covenant. The only, the, the, the Vedic, no, the Mosaic doesn't have the royal grant. That's not the only thing it doesn't have. Well, about name after man. Well, that's not, no, 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 because no, Abraham. It's not unilateral. It's, it's a, that, that's right. That, that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not the only thing. It's not uni, unilateral. It is a two, two way, not two way. a one way. But it's conditional. It is conditional, mm -hmm. not unconditional. So we need, I want to sit there because one of these things is not like the other. But this is this is actually the covenant where the children of Israel actually became a people that followed God. This, this is actually the first one where it was to the people of God. Uh, and that was the children of Israel when God was delivering them through Moses out of Egypt and through the Red Sea. Now, this one was two-way. Let's look at these words, y'all. I want y'all to, 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 to look some stuff up for me. I, 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 I want us in, in our understanding of the covenants to truly take some time to understand the covenants. We're going to go through these definitions and then we're going to take a break a little bit after seven o'clock. But I want us, I want us to look at the difference in this wording. So up top, you see it says a divine biblical covenant is a promise from God, formalized in legal framework, solemnized by sacrifice, and guaranteed 
by a oath that the individuals take. This is key. That's deep. Because, because many, many of us have not viewed even our messianic commitments as a covenant that we are in with God, a legal framework that we enter into from the time that we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts the Lord Jesus that we are coming into a, a covenant fr legal framework with the relationship that we're actually in. So, so this is difficult because we know that we are not under the law. We're under grace, right? Mm -hmm. But that ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual commitment that you make when you come even underneath this dispensation of grace that we live in, this church age that we live in, this expanded grace that God gives to us. So let's look up these words, you all. Who, who want to look up the first word? Suzerain. The different types. I want to look at the words underneath uh, the, the Mosaic Covenant com the, uh, type compared to the ones that are underneath. All of the all the other ones are the same. Everything else is the same. This one, literally, all of them are different. So what, what are the differences that are in this? Anybody find that first word? Suzerain, a, so a sovereign or state having some control over another state that is internally anonymous, autonomous. Mm, okay. All right. So, 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 so God now enters into the relationship, but he enters into the relationship with them, even though he's a deity, seeing it as one state having control over another state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much I like that. What do y'all think about that? Says, says if, if you were to look a little bit deeper, I, let, let me go one more time. I, I, I want to say, it says, uh, um, th this is a covenant where there is a covenant between a stronger and a lesser kingdom. There is a superior king and a covenant. And then the autonomy, it gives these individuals autonomy within their own borders, even though they have an alliance that allows them protection. So this would be, uh, you know, I can't use America because they were more colonialist uh, than, than, than suzerainty. They, they believed in taking control uh, even if it wasn't their land. But, but imagine, imagine America in her current state and, and, and Canada fell on hard times. And so we come into covenant with them to make sure that they're strong and to even offer them protection. But we leave the entire government of uh, 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 Canada in place to still run their country as it is. This is key, you guys, because this is God leaving the choice in Israel's hands at this time. And because this was a new uh, uh, relationship with them. He had had the relationship with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, right? It was a patriarchal and a family faith before then. God never had any intent to be the faith of a nation. Do y'all get that? Mm -hmm. So as much as people try to talk about even today, our American nationalism and the idea that God was somehow one nation under God, God never wanted to work in the framework of a nation because he knew that kingdom and empire, you've heard my brother, Dr. Ramey talk about those often, those two do not coexist. And so God entered into a relationship with them at Sinai when he gave them the laws that said, okay, all right, we'll do this and we'll try it your way. You're hell bent. Uh, amen. Even when 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 uh, 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 when Moses went up on the mountain, you're hell bent on being like the place you come out of, the land that oppressed you. You down here building golden calves while this man is up here receiving the Ten Commandments. So this is them still in idolatry, the same way they were at the Tower of Babel. Literally, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one that parted the waters, parted the Red Sea brought them over on dry land, swallowed up their enemies in their horses and their chariots. And when they get over here, before Abraham, I mean, before Moses can climb the mountain to meet with God and receive the commandments, they are already building, building idols that are shaped 
in the land of the place that had just oppressed them. I want, yeah, to, sit there Egypt. I want to sit there for a minute. The cow was worshipped in Egypt. Mm -hmm. In many uh, uh, places over in the ancient Near East, it still is. So here we are with a brand new relationship with God where he's proven himself. And we come over and instead of bowing and worshiping at the mountain of that God, the same mountain that Moses had already seen him. And I'm sure he told them the story of the burning bush that was never consumed. The same one that Moses was going up and they called it the divine gloom because it was like there was a storm at the top for you to even be able to ascend up and meet God. And while all of this is going on, their minds are on worshiping idols from the country that oppressed them. See, many of us need to sit right there. Because that's black folk in America. <laughs> if, we, if, if, if we want to be real, that's black folk in America. Many of us have been rescued by God, given an opportunity for new relationship and new covenant. And the very thing that hinders our faithfulness and our walk with God is that many of us are still stuck worshiping the same idols that our oppressor put before us. Come on, look at our materialism. I, I, I want all of this to be relevant to you. Look, look at our overconsumption. Look at how we turned into the same locus that this country is. Look at the way we consume. We are the engine of capitalism because we believe in consumption as well. Back in, back in the early 1900s, folks used to die. Ain't that what they call the consumption? How many of y'all know something about that? that, that that's a little too old for y'all. They, they called it bronchitis. Y'all ever heard of, but, but y'all know that that, that that was the name for bronchitis in the early 1900s before they came up with the, uh, uh, with the, before they came up with the vaccines and all that stuff for people to take. Said that people called consumption. <laughs> many of us have the virus of consumption. And, and even though God has called us out, we're not very different. So God had them on a two-way contract. Okay, we can test this. But it's a if you do, then I will situation. And this is the only one in the Bible. But this is the beginning of their walk with him. Now, how many of y'all came into your, 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 your spiritual, your Christian relationship with the, with the mosaic understanding, even though you were a Christian? With the idea that you had to do something for God to respond for you, or respond to you. Anybody came in that way? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Hands up, both hands up. Yeah. If I do, do. Who, who, who was all saying, yeah? I'm sorry, I saw a few. I was going to Yes. Talk. Okay, so yes. You, you were there. That's old, right? That's old school. A lot of our ancestors taught it that way because it was taught that way to get taught it. that way to them. Yeah. I see you, Drew, as, as, as our youngest person on here. You say it wasn't given that way to you. So you were given the faith of grace, not a two-way faith. Yes, sir. Just grace. Yeah. So, so, so do you – so so here, here's, here's the question because there's tension, and the truth is we're somewhere in the middle. So whereas that legalistic side of it to where you do this and, and God mm -hmm. will do this for you is not accurate to describe the relationship that we're in in this messianic or new covenant. Do you think it has been healthy, Drew, for your generation to be given the truth that it's all grace and no responsibility? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I would say it's it's necessary and health necessary because it's the truth and healthy yeah. because it's the truth. But I think how it I think the delivery of it of that truth is what will determine you know the health of it if that makes I, sense. I no. No, no doubt, no doubt about it. No doubt about yeah. it. And, and and how has that delivery been so far? Because you live in this generation, you know that. <laughs> I'm talking with the church kids, you know, not the world folk, but with the church folk that you know. Do you believe that grace is abused? That 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 idea that it's all grace has turned into something that your generation abuses. Most definitely. That's why you have a, a bunch of us walking around here saying, uh, "God knows my heart," <laughs> because yes. grace has been abused. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and here's why I want to establish that. Because right now we're living just like the country is at a bundle of extremes. You've got the old school that came up saying, no, you got to do some things for the Lord. If you do, then God will. And so they're, they're operating from a legal framework. Amen. But then you got the young folk that are in the new covenant that are extreme grace saying, I don't have to do anything but accept the grace of God that's been given to me. And the truth is somewhere in the middle. The truth is that while we are not required, amen, to do anything, because God said that your righteousness is but filthy rags. If I actually enter into a loving relationship, which is what the new covenant was supposed to be about, one where the scripture was engraved not on tablets, but on the hearts of men, not one where we circumcise the flesh of the foreskin, but one where we circumcise the heart of man, God says in that situation, my heart should be inclined towards being automatically obedient, not being forced to be obedient. Mm -hmm. That's right, now, right now, we don't have either as a dominant way that we're walking out. So our young folk are in the wrong place, but so are our elders. And the truth is we got to find some way to meet in the middle. Our elders need a whole lot of grace. The last generation needs a whole lot of grace. Because they haven't learned to live in grace, so they haven't learned to give grace. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that is what I that's what our young folk are bucking up against. Mm -hmm. At the same time, at the same time, our young people also need some commitments to covenants because covenants again were formalized in legal framework. They were solemnized by sacrifice and they were guaranteed by Oh, so there was some commitment that had to happen from us to even be able to say that we are entering into or agreeing on a covenant with God. Let's go back to the beginning. Somebody read out the, the, the first Noahic covenant for me. Walk, walk through it from one side uh, to the next. I want the, the, the references, the type, the duration, the sign, sacrifice, timing, beneficiary, and the purpose. And I want to do that with each one. We'll talk a little bit about these, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take our break in less than 10 minutes. Who wants to go through first? Noahic. I'll go. All right. Thank you. Genesis 6, 8, you say read everything across, correct? Yes. Genesis 6, 18. Genesis 8, 20 through 21. Genesis 9. Let me just start over. Genesis chapter 6, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 through 22. Genesis chapter 9, verse 8 through 18. Type royal grant one way. Mm -hmm. Unilateral, unconditional. Duration, everlasting, sign, symbol, rainbow, Genesis chapter 9, verse nine, verse 13 through 17. Sacrifice, Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 through 22. Timing, inaugurated just after the... This is Cataclysm. Cataclysm. What is it again? Cataclysm. Cataclysm. Cataclysmic worldwide destruction of the flood. May was no beneficiary. May was no in his seed with all of humanity in the animal kingdom. Purpose to secure the earth as a stage for the restitution of all things. Acts chapter 3, verse 21. When all, when all will be administered by Christ in millennium kingdom. Ephesians in chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. Okay, I want to stop there and point out a couple of things, you guys, before we go on. And thank you, Sister Daphne, for reading. So, so the first one is that this is a royal grant covenant. So a royal grant covenant is when it is the king's honor to bestow upon a faithful subject a certain thing, whether it be land. And you see in this one, it was actually the blessing uh, or promise of restoration and to not kill off all of humankind again. This, this was the basis of it. But that was not it, you guys. Do we see that the purpose of this is to secure the earth as a stage for the restitution of all things when all will be administered by Christ in the millennial kingdom? 
So how many of you in your understanding of God's restoration and story of redemption understood that that restoration and redemption included his perfect earth? Anybody? Not me. Did we know that God had intention to restore his perfect earth? That it was not just his perfect creation of man, but that it was also the earth that God intended to restore. This is yeah, our truth. Because that's when he's going to have his kingdom going to be here on earth. That, that's right. It's hard to have a millennial reign on this jacked up earth with global warming that's and right. all this other stuff that we have. And this is why he said, and I looked, and from heaven I saw coming mm -hmm. down. Pay attention to this now. Down. A new heaven and a new earth. God is literally going to restore the earth first before he finishes the restoration and redemption of mankind. Ooh, I'll shout with y'all if y'all want, especially with the way we done ate up this earth. All, all <laughs> in the water. Earthquakes happening everywhere from all our drilling and all the stuff we done took up out the earth, depleting the resources. We got the, the, the sun trying to burn folk. Luckily, we got melanin. We ain't as affected by those things. But here we have God promising first to restore his earth. And this is unilateral. This is one way. Man can't do this, right? This is all God. Somebody look up Acts 3 and 21 for us. First one to get it, read out loud. Somebody be looking up Ephesians 1, 10 and 11. Huh? Everything as he promised. What did you say? Huh? You talking to us? You said Acts 321. Acts 321, yeah. Yeah, I was reading out the Oh, okay. I could I couldn't hear you. It seems like your voice is off to the side. Oh, yes, you're breaking up. Can y'all hear me? Yes, now yeah. we can. Yeah. Okay. And then must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything. As he promised long ago through his holy prophet. I don't know what's up. You you go you're still going in and out. Thank you. Thank you though for, for volunteering to read. Let me here. I I'll 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 go ahead and read this one. I have it. You have it? Go ahead, Sister Catherine. Yeah, it says, whom, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Okay. So did he, did he say all things or all people? All things. Yeah. All things. So God is going to restore his creation. Everything. And, and he didn't just say the earth. All things. This all is things. Mm -hmm. Animals had to be preserved. This is why all of them had to make it over. Because in the beginning, God said all things that were made were what? Were good. Mm -hmm. So God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. So his plan of redemption from the beginning included the redemption of the animals, the redemption of the earth, the redemption of all things. That's necessary because we're building on these covenants, guys. So all of them are continuing to flow in this same royal grant, God decree, based on faithful subjects. The next one, though, we get Abraham's covenant. So the sign, well, I'm sorry, the sign in the first one was a rainbow. So don't overlook that rainbow the next time that you see it. Stop, marvel at the mm -hmm. rainbow, and remember that this is God's grace flashing across yeah. the sky. Amen. It is a reminder Amen. to us that Amen. although we deserve the destruction of God, instead we receive the overflowing mm. grace of God. And this is what his covenants are all about. His covenants show us grace because if God was not a graceful God, then he would have took us out after one covenant. Oh, yes. Yep. And instead, we just went over eight of them and we've got a highlight and a focus on five. So God continued to move through covenant after covenant, legal framework. Why would you need a new covenant unless the first one was broken? That's mm. good. <laughs> Unless the first one was broken. So with untrustworthy people that continue to, to botch the legal side of this agreement and not keep the sacrifices that they guaranteed in their oath, God continued to make covenant after covenant. 
Lord have mercy. Grace and mercy. My, my, my. Yeah. We in the Old Testament. That's right. Somebody read through Abrahamic for me. Okay. I'll read Abrahamic. Okay. okay. Uh, Abrahamic. You, can the, you can get the next one, uh, Sister LaShawn. I heard you coming in. Okay. 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 Right. Uh, Abrahamic 1913 BC re references Genesis 12, 1 through 3, 15, 13 through 18, 17, 9 through 11, and 19, and 22, 15 through 18. Type, also a raw grant, one way, unilateral, unconditional, duration, everlasting, sign, symbol, circumcision, circumcision. Mm -hmm. Genesis 17 and 11. Stop right there, y'all. Y'all know, oh, 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 uh, a Abraham was 99, 99 years old, <laughs> and God still said to begin this covenant, sir, you and all of your ancestors after you. So I know we think about the babies getting it done in the first eight days and all of that. But can you imagine being 99 and the commitment that you have to make to God is to cut off the flip? Oh, okay. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying. That's a sacrifice. That's a oh, sacrifice. Oh, my, my, my. So there is a sign. And sometimes the sign is our response to God. In this 99 covenant. years. What, 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 what'd, you say, what'd you say, Brother Drew? I'm just saying, making him do that after 99 like, years of living as a man. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that. Go, go ahead, uh, uh, Sister Catherine. Chime in for me. No, I, I was supposed to be on mute. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. I, I thought, I, well, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. I thought you had your hand up. Oh, no, I was putting my hand to my face. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So All right. The, the, the grace that God has, we, we, we need to pay attention. Go ahead and finish that, that one out. Uh, sign symbol across the circumcision, Genesis 17 through 11, 17 and 11. Sacrifices, Genesis 15, 8 through 21. Timing inaugurated just after the disaster of Nimrod's rebellion, the sin of the sons of God and the Tower of Babylon, the Nephilim's on, yeah. and a beneficiary, yeah. Yeah. Uh, beneficiary made with Abraham and his seed Israel. His spiritual blessings are enjoyed by believers now by faith. Thank you, God. And lastly, purpose. So one of the things I want to show us, you guys, is how all of the other covenants bleed down. So Noah's covenant was made with him and his seed, but it was with all humanity and the animal kingdom and the things of the earth as well. Uh, here we see Abraham, obviously, initiating this relationship with God, following after God, being the one to take that journey of faith that we now see him on. But then we see that this covenant God made was with Abraham and his seed, and his spiritual blessings are enjoyed by believers even now by the faith. So we see God continuing to do a continual work. It was never about just that moment in time. No more than with our spiritual lives is it just about us in this moment in time. The covenant God is making with us will have ramification for generations, you guys, if we walk into the framework of our covenant. Somebody's chiming in? Finish out, Mr. Poe. Uh, the purpose to secure an innumerable seed to enjoy the land and blessing and the world through them, not yet fulfilled, but will come to pass in the millennial kingdom of Christ, at Christ's second coming. Luke 1, 71 through 75, Romans 4 and 13. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so we see again that, that all of these have future implications. All of them are pointing us forward, right? What are they pointing us forward to? Christ. To the new kingdom. That's God right. But, but not just Christ. The to return. His church as well. That's right. And this is what we get into uh, by the end of this week and into next week. That's all we'll have for the final two weeks. We'll be talking about the church, but without understanding the continuation of God's covenant, you guys, where we fit in this process, many of us have understood our commitment as Christians 
outside of our messianic covenant with Christ. That's what we went into. When we confessed and believed, when we accepted that blood as the payment and remission for our sins, when we came to that cross and bowed at it and said we made him Lord and Savior, we are entering into a covenant. That covenant has legal framework that is extended since the beginning of God's redemption, you guys. And so we enter into it, not just at our broken moment, where now we allow Christ to heal us and redeem us and rescue us from sometimes the pains of our own actions, but we enter into it, yes, there, because he's gracious and he's loving. We enter into it as actors in the redemptive plan. And this is the part, that's the framework that's missing for many of us in the church. We think about coming to church, we think about doing church, but when, when, we, when he wrote these as covenant people, we are to be the church and the church unleashed as well, the church on assignment the church empowered because we are a church that has a legal obligation to finish the work. We, we read the scripture, said that he would finish the work that he began in us. He was faith, he'd be faithful and just to finish that work, but he can't finish a work that we refuse to submit to. Oh. We don't understand our contractual commitments. So he's sitting on the sideline ready to do his part. And often many of us don't understand the commitment contractually that we made as we walk with him. So I love, I love that. But it's all leading up to, all leading up to, all of it unconditional, all of it bleeding into our New Testament text. But they're all covenants that we are making alongside of Christ. So what we're, what we're going to do is it's 720 and I want you off by 830 today so we are going to take a 10 minute break our um poll is up most of you have already filled it out the poll for your um for your attendance uh so if you haven't filled it out and let us know that you're here go ahead and chime in get that done and we will jump back into our covenant conversations. Uh, I mentioned it briefly at the beginning, but I, I just, I really want to tell you that I am grateful for you guys' insights and your reflections in your papers. So I'm thankful that, that you're taking the time to really wrestle with what you're reading and to ask yourself what it means to you, what it means to the world that you're in, what mm -hmm. it means to the church. Those are, all of those are the things that we're supposed to be dealing with. And then looking at the journey of faith, which I see you guys doing as well, the development, which is that thing that I wasn't taught when I came to the church. I was taught expectation without a, a recognition that grace happens along the journey uh, of faith. And the same way we see this walk out with Abram, who turned into Abraham, is the same way God takes that same journey with each one of us. Uh, and and, and I, I, one of, one of the, 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 the Andrew Coopers uh, mentioned the idea that, that God was growing him through those circumstances, that that was a part of Abraham's growth, that his journey, that the growth happened in often the bad situation, that thing that would happen, that tough trial, that situation. And the truth is, that's just like our walk. It's, it's no different uh, than the walk that we're in. And so many of us would have had a lot more grace with ourselves. Uh, amen. Would, 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 have, would have had a lot less condemnation if we had been taught to see the scripture through this lens. And so regardless of how you've seen it before, this is not uh, you know, the uh, the abusive grace conversation. This is the trust the process conversation. Hey, hey, if you're a basketball watch, I know I got a lot of ladies on here, but the Philadelphia 76ers for years have told us to trust the process. And now they finally actually have a team after a decade of trusting the process. And it can seem for a fan like, how long does the process last? And I know sometimes, we're thinking that same way when we think about our faith. We really want God to speed up the work he's doing in us. We really want him to go ahead and change us a little bit quicker and maybe more miraculous. We really want to make it to the destination of maybe that original dream that he showed you. God told me I was going to pastor from the beginning, but there was no part of me that was ready for a pastorate. So it took a journey uh, to even get me ready for the first pastorate. And I tell people the truth now that based on what I've learned since then, 
I wasn't ready to pass it in uh, because sometimes we speed up what God wants to do through a journey uh, of learning and walking with us. And so we've got to slow down just like Abram did, uh, slow down just like these individuals we see in the Bible and walk out our faith with God and recognize that even when we don't give ourselves grace, God has shown grace through covenant after covenant, failure after failure with his people. So I need to read the text, understanding that the same grace that he gave to them still applies to me today. I should have a broken and a contrite heart, no doubt. I should be leaning into the change and the place that God wants me to go, no doubt. But I've got, we have to stop living in con uh, condemnation. Condemnation. Because the sons and daughters of God are buried in condemnation now. Yeah. And the reason why not many of us walk as bold as we should during this mm -hmm. season. Amen. Because most Probably of us Kevin Harper. are beating up Amen. on ourselves. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, Harper, man. When you, when you said in. that, talking about Abraham, I got to think of, of course, the spirit, the father dropped that in my spirit. It's like, what if, what if God had to tried to give Abraham the test of sacrificing his son before he had went through some other journeys? That's right. Uh, journeys of faith. He wouldn't uh, have been ready. Right. <laughs> just yeah. like us. No, beforehand, yeah. we pro he probably would have failed, probably would have tried to run away with his son, probably would have <laughs> tried to give God Ishmael when he mm -hmm. never, that, that was never mm -hmm. supposed to be that way. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you're right. It is a journey. journey. Of faith. There is growth along the journey. There is some bumps that have to happen because if we don't have any knocks and bruises, we will never be able to truly appreciate walking with God and, and who he is in our lives. Amen. Amen. You know, and I, I love it because I think that, that was definitely Cooper Sr. that brought up uh, the idea that 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 by by one uh, 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 concoction of, of Abraham's wife, and Abraham together, but led by Sarah. He slept with her servant, and yeah. people are still at war today, y'all, because yeah. of this, this, this malformation of the covenant between Abraham and God. They brought in their own works. They tried to do it their way. They tried to go outside of God's original agreement, and because of it, nations are still warring. Right today, and, and whether it be nations outside of us or even thinking about, uh, you know, some of the wars that go on now inside of families, unhealed wounds, and people that are still fighting because of sins that occurred long time ago, we've got to start taking seriously the impact of our actions on future generations. Uh, yes, go, go ahead, uh, 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 Reverend Catherine. So that brought up actually a question as I was reading because I know that um, when Hagar and Ishmael were out and, and she was saying she didn't want to see him die, yes. that, that God did, you know, take uh, sympathy and everything on them. Uh -huh. But, and, and God knew that Ishmael was Abraham's son. But at the same time, when we're reading about Abraham during the test, and the angel refers to Isaac as your only son. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. does that is that not recognizing Ishmael as his son? No. Well, well, no. Uh, 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 the concubine sons were not counted. Uh, no, not 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 in that way. Not as an official part of the lineage. No, okay. no more. No more than if Prince Harry right now decided to have. He already did it with it because he got that that colored girl on his side. But 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 if he decided to have a baby outside of wedlock, that baby doesn't inherit the throne. That, that's not the same. That that baby is not considered a part of the royal lineage. So yeah, that's difficult for us to take. But can I can I inject some hope off in there? For the ladies, uh, God is a faithful God, and he continued to redeem women all throughout the text. Hagar had nothing to do with this plot that, that Abram and Sarah came up with. As a matter of fact, because she was property, she could not say no to what they were telling her to do. So because of that, even though she found herself out in the middle of the desert, thinking that her and her son were going to die, God came out there and he rescued her. And, and, and Hagar is the only woman in the Bible that God makes a covenant with. Go back and read your text. <laughs> 
the only woman that God makes a covenant with directly and guarantees and even today if you see the wealth even though you see the poverty and the fighting you also see the wealth of the arabians the saudi arabians you see it in qatar you see it in the united arab emirates you see it in saudi arabia this is the offspring of uh, of 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 uh, of ishmael that's what that would be the the 12 tribes are the united arab emirates that we look at today and these folk are wealthy. So God actually held up. Now, he also said the sword would never depart from them as well. That, that's off in there too. But there was a part of him that, that made provision even for the mistake that his people made in Abraham directly and Sarah secondarily. So, so uh, Hagar got a covenant because of that. Not only that. I'm throwing some stuff in there. This is when you become Bible readers. You got to look it up for yourself. Don't trust me. Go back and read the text. Uh, 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 Hagar ended up at Bear uh, El Rohi. Uh, the place means God saw me. And so after after the yes, the, yeah, God 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 yes. sees me. right. That this this was a recognition that regardless, and this is going to be a whole nother faith. And I and this is the concubine and all this other stuff. But, but God saw her. So that's the first thing. That's shout music all right there. Yeah. Then God made a covenant with her. Then God kept that covenant throughout the ages and the generation. But if you will look at the story, uh, and I, I want you guys to go back and track it. This, this will be some, some bonus work in between this week and next week. Uh, go and find out what happened to uh, uh, Isaac after Abraham tried, uh, after Abraham took him up and presented him as the son of sacrifice. Two things happen. You never see Abraham and, and Sarah together again in the text. You also mm -hmm. never see Isaac with them again either. I am going to give a free quiz score to the person that can go find out when was the next time we saw Isaac in the text. This, this, this type of stuff I like right here. The next time we find Isaac in the text after the sacrifice, where was he? And I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to give y'all because I believe in Bible reading. I'm going to give you four minutes to scan the text. If you can't get oh, you it, want us to do that right now? If okay. You can't, I, I was going. I was going to let it wait. But if you can't get it within uh, uh, before seven forty-five, seven forty-six, since the clock just turned. So if you can't get it before seven forty-six, then I, I'll let you search it out. And the first person that emails it to me or emails the answer uh, in in the, uh, after we get off, then you'll get you'll get a free one hundred on the quiz score. This is a good one, y'all. <laughs> Question again. When is the next time we see Isaac in the text after the sacrifice, after he and Abraham go up in the ram in the bush, the story we all know? And, um, and, and when the famine happened in, in chapter 26, or am I too far ahead? Mm. Or is it is it when the famine happened in chapter 26? Where do you see it? Um, chapter 26, there was a famine in the land besides the former famine. And Isaac went to Gerar to Ambimelech. Not, not too far. This is oh, chapter so 24, when, when really. Day, when Abraham was dying. Was it uh, after the death of Sarah? Yeah. Ah, and what where, where do you see him? Do you see him in the in the text? Where is it at? Give me a verse. Oh, um, uh, Genesis 20, 24. And uh, well, it begins at twenty four when yeah, we get his wife. Uh, getting ready to look for a wife for uh, Isaac. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it is uh, Genesis 24, and uh, Rebecca sees him as they're coming back. Uh, and it says, verse 62, now Isaac had come from Beryl Laha Roha, for he was he living had come in the from east. where? Well, Beer, uh, our role. For now, what is that me. place? Uh, God has seen me. So, no. who was he with? Hagar. He been with it. Hagar and Ishmael. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you kidding me? Oh, wow. The concubine I mean, was taking care of. what now? <laughs> yeah. The concubine was taking care of Isaac. You say the what one now? That he Sean, he was with his brother. That's what you say. And his, and his, yeah. Huh. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. And he was. We don't we don't read the text with no intentionality, y'all. So we missing <laughs> the Jerry Springer stuff, y'all. Wow. We missing the good stuff. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah, with the stuff. Let <laughs> just show you how we read over stuff. Yeah. Definitely we do. over. <laughs> I'm gonna give all of y'all a hundred. Okay. Yeah. I got y'all. Everybody get an extra hundred. The book is great. Listen, you have to be, this is why you the, the Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is not yeah. just reading the text. If I don't do the word studies on those texts, if I don't know when I see that that bell El Ro E, Ro I, if I don't know to look at again because that looks familiar because I saw that in another place, if I don't read it in conjunction to where I'm reading it back to back so that that can still be familiar because if it's a bunch of time in between it, I don't even remember that the next time that yeah. I look at it. These, the Bible is a wow. story that was meant for us to be to be ingested by us. And so sometimes we got to get caught up in it just so we can really understand the story. Reading a verse here or there for those that mm -hmm. want to understand the Bible is not enough. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, 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 Reverend Catherine. Uh, one part I did miss when I was reading is that when Rebecca first saw Isaac, she wanted to know who he was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. No, they, 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 hey, there was some interest already. Them, yep, them, she had, she yeah, she had interest. Them antennas, them antennas went up. When, when, <laughs> yeah. God, when, when God got you searching out the one. The one hey, that, now. The, Look, hey, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the, man, I, I tell people all the time, if, if, if you truly read Genesis and don't come out liking the Bible, I don't think you read Genesis. There are so many stories, and this is the Jerry Springer, Mari Povich stage of the Bible. We got, we got that drama going on yeah. from jump right off the <laughs> ship. Story within I'm, talking, story, yeah. I'm I really read it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and man. oh my. So so that was for free, and I'm gonna give all the <laughs> No, Reverend Harper, would yeah. you would you um would it be um beneficial? I know it would be beneficial, but as far as just um, picking a book and reading the whole book? Yes, that's the best way to read the Bible. Yes. Okay. And, and if you're going to read it, in order is the in best order. way to read it too. So, I, okay. this, so it sounds boring. I promise you it does. It sounds boring. But okay, it's yeah, it if you commit to it because you get a bigger picture, picture. of the story. Yeah. Most of us read the Bible and so we get snapshots through scriptures. We'll uh -huh. yeah. Here, yeah. 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 There, and we'll and we can grab a little principle out of it. But when you read the story, then mm -hmm. you really get the whole picture of what God is trying to say to his church. That's how you we know, get so it, much it, stuff out of context, huh? Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah. I have another question and then I'm, we're going to go ahead, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, um, the Old Testament, it's in chronolo chronological order, right? Uh, the Old Testament? Not necessarily. Not, not, okay. not necessarily. Uh, a, a, you know, uh, the, the Torah is in chronological order. It is the story of God's people, uh, you know, through the lens of Moses. And so that portion of it will take you in a chronological order. Uh -huh. After that, it skips around based on the principles that it's teaching, not all of it. But because truthfully, Job is the oldest book of the Bible. Yeah, that's right. At the right. beginning of our Bible, 
right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so when 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 we when we look at stuff like that, not quite chronological. The same thing with the prophets. The prophets aren't necessarily in order. The wisdom books, Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastics, Song Song of Solomon, those aren't as much about being in order because they're not about order, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, those are given to us uh, for instructions and understanding. The, the, the path of and the path toward wisdom. So not quite chronological, no. But okay. but you can read it in order and get the chronology that comes with it, especially if you remember these seven C's of redemption that I'm telling you. You'll always know where you're at in the story. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. yes, but but what, what I saw in Genesis, though, is that, like you said, it's all these stories but everything that the people are doing, it's the same thing they're doing now. It's uh -huh. just, we, ain't, yeah. we ain't doing nothing new. We ain't been in nothing new. We're still doing the same Solomon stuff. said that. He said there's nothing new under the sun. Going, you know, <laughs> going to, like we ain't learned the thing. <laughs> yeah, not, not just in America, worldwide, under the yeah. sun. Yes. That's what Cleodestes said. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That, that was I got. That was I got Solomon. Yep, same one that wrote pro Proverbs. Now pay attention to that. I know they say what we own today, but look at the difference between Solomon in in the Proverbs, all of this stately wisdom mm -hmm. and all wisdom, and then in Ecclesiastes, he talking about vanity. Vanity is all vanity. Down the yeah. Dust there, wasn't yeah. It? This is the difference between ideal and then as he continued to live with all of those concubines and all of those bad decisions that he was making, now he found himself at the end of it as a man who was granted and imparted wisdom by God, but because he chose the world's wisdom by the end of his life, he had given up on the original wisdom that God gave. My, 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 my. <laughs> That's that fake power you talked about last week, Pastor Harper. That's right. And oh, hey, and, and instead he was a young, he was a young wise man and an old fool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my God! Hey, hey. Watch, your, watch yourself, Harper. Hey, this is, <laughs> I know, I'm just talking about the text. I, 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 it, it's not against direct. It's just, just the text. So, so, so let's let's walk through. We got about about uh, 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 thirty five. Uh, uh, minutes left. I want to get through these other covenants because what we'll do, I've got a couple more prophetic readings for you guys uh, in between this week and next, and then we'll begin our bridge toward to the New Testament on Friday. Amen. Okay? Amen. So, 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 so Davidic kingdom, we're skipping over the mosaic because the mosaic was the one we started with. It was the yeah. one that, that, that God truly yeah. initiated the, the relationship with them. But I, I need you guys to know God always saw the children of Israel, not as a nation. He never talked about Israel as a nation. He talked about them as a mixed multitude of people. people. When they came out of Egypt, they were a mixed multitude of people. Mixed multitude means that they were multicultural. When they came out, yeah. there were yeah. not only the, the, the individuals that we consider uh, the Jew, the Jewish people that went down, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants, and yeah. now Moses, down there leading them as the generation of Joseph fades away and a new Pharaoh comes on the scene, right? Mm -hmm. These are the same people, but the new Pharaoh didn't know them. And they grew ever increasingly further away from God because now in this place of oppression, they forgot how to worship the God of their creation. And so one of the primary reasons for God delivering them out and taking them over was so that his chosen people that he had chosen before, even though they had forgotten how to worship, would be out of, would be able to come out and be able to worship him. That's why it was so defaming that they would get out and choose to worship the cow from their uh, uh, from from the place of their oppression, the place of their bondage, rather than the God who actually delivered them through the hand of Moses. Amen. 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 So, so we're looking at that, and, and, and the Sabbath is the symbol. It's the rest day. It is that day that's dedicated to God. Uh, we know we don't live by the Sabbath because Sabbath was created for man, not man for Sabbath. Right, Sabbath was simply Amen. a rest day. God knew that the nations of this world, listen to me, you guys, that they would that they would feed themselves on excessive toil. So God mandated a day of rest for his people, because he knew that if you were truly going to be a devout worshiper of God, you could not be a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
I know this is hard for our society, and mm -hmm. especially for my 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 my, my boomers and my, my my early Gen Xs, those that have been raised here in this American go-getter system mm -hmm. where we are always on the wheel and chasing that next thing. But God gave us a rest day that was mandated because He said we should never be so caught up pursuing gain that we don't rest at the feet of God. Amen. Man, opposite of that is we got a whole bunch of lazy people in this society, and I ain't talking and and swindlers and hustlers and all that other kind of stuff. The opposite is true as well. So we are supposed to work. The Bible tells us if a man don't work, that man does not eat, should not eat. But we we know that God intended for us to rest. So the sign uh, was the Sabbath it was brought in just after the dramatic birth. You see that birth of Israel as they left Egypt. So if you ask a Jewish person, when they begin to walk with God, what the beginning of their faith is, what the consecration of their faith is, while they honor Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the patriarchs of faith, this, this deliverance moment where, 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 where it, you know, Moses raised the staff and parted the Red Sea and they walked over on dry land, this is the time when the actual children of Israel became a people group, all right? So uh, brought in just before that, it was abolished in the death of Christ. So this Mosaic law, as is the only one that is abolished, y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. None of them, all the rest of them continue. This was a two-way. This was a tutor. That's what the apostle Paul calls it. This law mm -hmm. was to teach us what holiness looks like. And as the video showed when we first started, to remind us that we will never be able to live up to the standards of holiness, right? Mm -hmm. So so this is why this was there. That's why it's not a permanent covenant. It was a temporary covenant. This is the only temporary covenant. All the rest of them are both unconditional and they are still, you know, like they are still moving. They are still in operation as of today. And this one was added, as you see it here, as a temporary supervisor. I use the word tutor to teach righteous yeah. standards and magnify sin until Christ came. No longer is this one in force. So we learn from the Mosaic Covenant. Yeah. So we do not live out the Mosaic Covenant. And when people try to take us back to the covenant and try to get us to live under the legalistic uh, uh, side of the, of the law, we're able to show them scripturally, 2 Corinthians 3, 9 through 11, we no longer live under this covenant. Go ahead, brother. Professor. Yes, okay, sir. so um, so is that what separates us, like you're saying, in legalistic view, is that what separates us from Judaism? Is that yes. they still live under that mosaic law? Yes. When we got you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And, and, and there's a Perfect. modern form of Juda Judaism that the rabbis instituted after the temple was destroyed because there mm -hmm. were no more sacrifices that mm -hmm. could be made, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, mm -hmm. so it's going to be hard to live up to this one that's built around the temple and sacrificing on the altar, right, and all mm -hmm. of that. But they still live up to the laws and honor the festival. But since there is no actual temple for the sacrifice, then the sacrificing laws were adjusted. And so this is modern rabbinic Judaism is what it would be called. And that most Jews that you know today, that's what they're actually practicing. So it's like a cult. I, I'm not going to call it a cult because these are still God's chosen people, but they, they, they ignored, uh, this is where the Bible says they, he, they ignored the chief cornerstone. They rejected yeah, exactly. what, 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 what trying to stand on their foundations. They rejected the very foundation that was sent for them. They're okay. still looking for the Messiah to come. Yeah, and they're confused because they're stuck between, they, they mix up a little bit of the Mosaic and the Davidic mm -hmm. all together and, and, and instead of recognizing that, that the same way God can move from Mosaic to Davidic is the same way he moved to the Messianic as the fulfillment for all of them. Wow. <laughs> So y'all will get a little bit more study. I gave you this, and the reason why you're not, you're only getting excerpts of reading is because I want you to go back and look at the scriptures associated with them. None of them are long, but I want you to really look at these things post-conversation and think through this whole chart. Because this chart, again, is one of those things that will help you for the rest of the time that you are understanding the Bible.
not just this class. This, this will be beneficial to you going forward. So I want you to understand those covenants, but then I also want you to understand this is what we celebrate when we're taking communion, that new covenant as well. Okay. We'll get that next. Let's go through Davidic covenant. Who wants to read for me uh, the Davidic covenant? LaShawn, weren't you next? Okay, yes, I, I was going to say I read for you. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay, the reference is 2 Samuel 7, verses 11 through 16, and Psalms 89, verses 3 through 37, and tight, royal grant, one way, unilateral, unconditional, and duration is everlasting, sign, symbol, Christ's resurrection and enthronement, Acts 2, verses 30 through 33. Sacrifice, 2 Samuel 6, um, verses 17 through 18. And timing, inaugurated, in a, did I say that right? Inaugurated. Mm -hmm. inaugurated, okay. Between the past chaos of the judges period and the future apostasy mm -hmm. of Israel and Judah in the past Solomon era of a divided kingdom of Israel. Yeah. Beneficiary made with King David and his royal seed and purpose mm -hmm. secures a son of David as sovereign to sit on the, to, I'm sorry, to sit on a throne and reign forever. Yeah. And Luke 1 Verse 32, currently dominant, dormant, but remains in place to be taken up when the son of David, Christ, ascends, David's throne in the millennium. Yes. So now we are shifting into the, pro to the prophetic announcement of the coming of okay. Christ. These other things have been showing us why we need the covenant from the beginning, whether we go back to the Edenic and the Adamic, right, and seeing why we need God, how sin broke us, what dysfunction and disunity did uh, uh, after God cut through all of these other isms in the beginning and began to navigate his people to get closer to him. Now that heartbeat is growing louder because now we're getting closer and closer. We've proven through the Mosaic covenant that we are unable to live up to the system of sacrifices. Can y'all imagine if we had the sacrifice based on what it's saying in the Levit in, in Leviticus today? If, if those were our sacrifices, we all would be so for that. Mm. Every time you sin, every time you lie, every time you do whatever, there was. We wouldn't never leave it. Huh? We would have been there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no we, 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 we would stay at the temple. No? <laughs> we'll run out of we'll run no, out no. of no. Hey, that, that, because especially in today's state. And, yeah, and so, yeah, boy. so so we see that while God wants to create a relationship, Abrahamic, with a direct people. The Mosaic Covenant only proves that we are unable to live up to this. And so we are, we are now shifting into God's ultimate promise for the Davidic kingdom, where he now uh, shows you how Jesus steps out. This is when you hear people talk about him coming down through 42 generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of, uh, out of uh, 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 eternity and into time, they are talking about his walk through the Davidic lineage, you guys. And so the, when you go to Matthew, if you were to read the beginning yep. of Matthew, then you are reading. I know many of us have opened up Matthew and that's some of the boringest reading ever, especially if you go old school King James and such <laughs> and such beget such and such. And this one beget that one. And there was a whole lot of begetting going yeah. on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what they are doing is showing you 14 mm -hmm. generations at a time. Three generations, you'll see it's broken up into three different people, three different groups, but 14 generations at a time so that it, it, it comes down to 42 generations total by the time you add up that 14 times three, showing you this is who Jesus came. And this is when we find out that Rahab is a part of his lineage and all the different folks that came down through, right? This is where those things are. And so not only does Matthew connect us to the lineage of Jesus, but it connects us immediately to the story of the Old Testament. So it reminds us as we pick up in the Gospels, which we will do next week, 
that we are reading a continuation of the Old Testament text and a continuation of the Old Testament covenants as well. Yeah. So this is where we're at. Yes, sir. Mr. Drew. No, I was just had a thought like sometimes without this, like this should also be a requirement because <laughs> you can sometimes read the New Testament as in like the Old Testament boring. I'm going to skip over there and just read the New because that's where we're at. You know, but there's no understanding of Jesus, no understanding of anything if you don't fully grasp the Old Testament. Yeah. That is the that's, point. That's, of what, of that's what Jesus language. talked about most was the Old Testament. And Paul. You know, and, right. and many, and then even some of the other writers through illusion, even when they didn't make direct reference, they would bring in scriptural reference. They would bring in what the prophet Isaiah said or what this person said, yeah. because all of them were connecting the dots. And so this yeah. class really is that. I told you, it's an accordion mm -hmm. to help you connect the dots between the Old Testament and the New, so that when you stand on your firm foundation and you talk about who the church is, what the church is supposed to be doing, and how I am an operator and an agent within it, then I see it with enough length to understand the foundation that I'm standing on. You guys will have a firm foundation by the end of this class, and one that is more firm than a lot of the folk that are sitting next to you, because one of the things I learned by studying at different churches was that a bunch of folks were missing this, and some of them were in pulpits, and some of them were in pews, and some of, them, some of them were deacons, and some of them were preachers, and some of them were ministry leaders, but I was recognizing a lot of people were missing these foundations of understanding Christian mm -hmm. ministry. Yeah. So Davidic, Davidic kingdom. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's read through. Uh, uh, no, we'll, I'll save that for y'all. Y'all, y'all get a chance to do the reading. Uh, like I said, it ain't, all of these are short scriptures. None of them are long. Uh, none of them are whole books or any of that. And so we can kind of go through them and dice through them. I want you to gain understanding because I want you to put these pieces together. So, so it was a royal grant one way. Uh, that's where we were at. And the sign of the symbol, uh, is that where you were at, uh, Reverend Davis? Um, How far have we made it? No, no, we had um, already made yes, it. Yes, we had all the way through. I had completed it. Okay, that's right. So, so Christ's resurrection and enthronement is when this covenant will be fulfilled. So just like the others, what did I tell you about them? They're continuing. They're still mm -hmm. going. We have not fulfilled them. So the only one that was demolished, the only one that was demolished was the Mosaic covenant. Mosaic. The, no the Noahic, the Abrahamic, and the Davidic are all still active right now. And we know, obviously, that the Messianic has begun as well. And so we are currently operating in four different covenants all at once. Yeah. When most folk try to get you to understand one or the other, it's a continuation. So as he said a minute ago, you can't understand the New Testament without processing that all of these covenants are actually what God is promising to bring to pass as we approach that great getting up morning, as the saints call it, when 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 he cracks the sky and calls us up and judgment day happens and 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 Satan and his imps are finally judged and man is elevated and God says, Well done. You can't process any of that without understanding the redemption that God is walking us through. And if you are processing it outside of that, then you're processing a muted version of the whole truth. When God wants us to have the whole truth, because that understanding is the difference between how we preach and teach, even in the New Testament. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so, so a son of David will sit on the throne. What you'll see, and this is the part we're not going through, the, the story of Israel. I started and I gave you guys, I encourage you. I, when, I, when I promise you that some of this stuff, you'll read some of the scripture in the Old Testament and be like, what? That's not in the Bible. That can't be in the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm going to have you read one. The story of Tamar and Judah. Who's ever read it? Oh, I don't know everybody read that. Yeah, no, no, not everybody. No, not, not everybody. everybody. No, not everybody. That, that was pretty foul. That was some pretty foul stuff right there. So, so don't, don't say nothing else, y'all, because everybody else looking like they ain't ready. So, so y'all, that, that, that's enough. I won't hear no more. So so y'all get to read rough. it too. But we're going to, I want to show you, amen, because it, it, it is actually another one of these stories that redeems uh, the woman inside of this patriarchal Bible that we're reading. You see God uh, uh, elevating uh, the voice of this woman, and she actually gets a name. One of the things that you'll see over and over again, Hagar is different, Tamar is different, but a lot of women in the Bible don't even get a name. 
That tells you that the society they were living in, the patriarchal type societies that the Bible was written in, that the woman was not even valued enough often to give her a name when they began to write. So those things are not accidental. But God is faithful in that he continued to elevate the plight of the woman that was being misused or mistreated by these same patriarchal, male-leading, dominant type society. So I love that part that's off in there too, for all my ladies. Amen. Um, so let's get to the last one, the Messianic. And we'll we'll spend our, our time. Oh, well, the other thing. We're, I told you we're not going to read it. This is the story of the Davidic kingdom. Now, how many of you, who knows how long uh, the kingdom of Israel actually existed? Anybody? Could you repeat your question? How long did the kingdom of Israel actually exist? The United Kingdom of Israel. You talking about in the, the millennium reign or are you saying like Oh, no, sir. Oh, I'm, talking oh, about, I'm talking about the actual reign. Oh, I, don't I know told that. you they weren't a people. They were a people first. The, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They came out of Egypt and then they were they were getting ready to cross over into the promised land and when they first crossed over they still were not a kingdom they were a, they were still a people mm -hmm. but they were tribes and clans that, that 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 stayed together and worked together because they were all from the same lineage and heritage they didn't become a king I mean become a kingdom until when to what king was called David David Saul was Saul there you go there Saul. you go come on sir that's right and 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 the prophet called out uh, uh, Saul, and Saul became the first king. Why? Why did they get a king? Why? Why? Why did Saul become the first king? Because that's what they asked for. That's, what the people. that's right. Almost demanded it too. Uh, yes. God, that's right. God was saying, I wanted you under theocracy. So through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you never had a king. Then you were in the, under oppression from an empire and, and a pharaoh. Then you came out and I took care of you in the wilderness and you didn't need a king for that. And then you went over to the promised land and inherited the land and you didn't need a king for that. But after all of that, you're demanding a king, so <laughs> I'll give you a king. How long did the kingdom last? How long? Years. Huh? Was it a thousand years or something like Definitely that? Definitely not. No, that's the reign. Years. A reign of about wait, 400 years? No. Nope, not even okay. that. 200. Not even that. 120 years. All this fight, all this stuff they're doing, they had 120 years where the kingdom was actually united and not divided. Mm -hmm. After yeah, they, that. Okay, that's right. After that, Solomon's sons were fighting and split the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. And then the kingdom got conquered in its split because a divided house shall not stand. not stand. Oh, we preaching and we ain't even we ain't talking like. Oh, is this where you get like Israel and Judah in the That's right. Okay. And yeah. Israel was the northern ten tribes, and mm -hmm. Judah was what what was the southern. Uh, tribe. This this is Benjamin and and Judah. This, mm -hmm. this is where we get the lion of the tribe of Judah from. And Judah was was in Jerusalem. So mm -hmm. so the reason why uh, we get the lion of the tribe of Judah is because the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, a, a, by extension, Joseph, all of them, they were the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the southern kingdom went into captivity. This is all free knowledge, y'all. In Babylon, the northern kingdom went into captivity in Persia. Persia. So do you know how we get the Samaritans? That, that, that they hate by the time Jesus comes back because they're not in there before <laughs> now. Y'all know where they come from? This is all free. I'm throwing in free. Where, where? Right? A they mixture come. of um, Samaria? <laughs> well, when, per when, when the Persians brought the, the top 10 tribes back, because they came back before the, uh, uh, the, the exile in Babylon. Uh, when they made it back, they moved the mountain. They would not allow the, the top 10 to go back to Jerusalem. The, the 10 tribes of the north, they wouldn't allow them to go back to Jerusalem. So they moved them to the mountain of Samaria. And they forced them to worship God on a separate mountain. So that by the time the, the, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin returned to the southern kingdom, and they saw that their ancestors 
were now worshiping God on the wrong mountain. This is when they considered them dogs that had betrayed their faith. You got to hood it out. You guys allowed somebody else to dictate the wor your worship of Yahweh. Wow. And because of that, they became estranged family members who would from then on be seen as the dogs that didn't even deserve the crumbs off of the children of uh, the tribe of Judah that they're taking. And they were all they they were all really kinfolk. Yes. Mm. Go back. Don't believe anything I'm telling. Read read the text now. <laughs> the text is there. These are inner family squabbles and feuds yeah. that we're dealing with. Yes. All the way back to the beginning. I have a question, Reverend. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned uh, earlier, and I always didn't never really understood the lion of the tribe of Judah. Where does that come from? Why is it referenced? Why are they referenced as the lion of the tribe of Judah? Because that was an Old Testament prophecy. That that was that what would be that was Jesus's um, title um, in the Old Testament when they referred to him uh, prophetically. Uh, and this was all the way back to the chore. I'm going to give you the scripture. Ju, 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 ju. You'll also see it in Revelation as well. Um, there it is. Genesis 49. So, so this, this, is, this is when we first see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay. But it is a reference to the, the messianic nature of Jesus, to his coming, to the redemption, to the final plan of God. Okay. And so he and Jesse, his father, and all of them, this line of David, all of them came out of the line of Judah. And so when you hear about Jesus, he is, as we saw in the covenants, he will be the ultimate fulfillment of the, the one who sits on David's throne and the throne never has an end. And so he is, that's why we, can, we call him Lion and the Lamb, because he's both the Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is both our meek and gentle Savior, <laughs> and he is also our conquering King. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Anybody else? Any other questions there? That's a good question, though. Those are those things. Sometimes we repeat them in church. Sister Lynn, folks say stuff all day long. Don't never know where it comes never from, know. how we say it, or, or what it means, or any of those. We should always, as Bible scholars, and, and, and that's what you guys are, whether you see it or not. If you are taking the time to study the Bible, you are entering into Bible scholarship, no matter what your level is. And as that, you should always chase the rabbit. Find out what things mean. That's where I started. Before I had any formal instructions, y'all, if I didn't understand something, if I didn't understand a word, I started chasing rabbits. I wanted to find out what everything meant, everything that I could, until God took me further and let me find out a little bit more. And even then, that's when you find out how much more you still have left to learn. <laughs> I have so, one more question, Pastor uh, Reverend. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You were just talking about um, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. and uh, and the covenant, you know, um, and some of them still hold on to the old covenant, yes. the old Mosaic covenant. And when Jesus came, he did celebrate the festivals. Mm -hmm. We were grafted in. Yes. Should we be celebrating those festivals? So un unlike some people, I don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating the festivals. What we see, though, the Apostle Paul deal directly with is that none of these ceremonial uh, uh, agents of cleansing, because that's all the festivals were. They were either celebrations of the goodness of God that had gone before, or they were mm -hmm. celebrations of ritual cleansing. None of them are required for our salvation. So, so is it good to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost? I think every Christian should. I think we should go back and truly understand, and I think we should study it with people who understand the Torah and, and this event in a much greater light than we do. Now, you're not going to hear this from most denominational people because most denominations are fearful that, of, of us studying with other faiths because they consider this un as, as opposed to a continuation of our faith, Old Testament to New, they consider now the Judaic faith as if it's something completely separate and isolated from us. So mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people. 
I, mm -hmm. I'll kick it. I'll kick it with the Jews and celebrate their rituals as well. But I am not required to because the, the covenant allows me understanding without direct affiliation. Yes. So I believe in affiliation, believe in celebration. Yeah. Yes. But I don't think we have to. I don't think that we are hindered from our blessings as some believe, especially in our Hebrew Israelite community and, and mm -hmm. some of the some of the others that, that believe that the that our lack of obedience and our lack of continuing in the festivals is actually a curse on black people today. And you hear a lot of that language uh, yeah. nowadays. So we need yeah. to return, mm -hmm. return to obedience to the law and return to uh, the, the, you know, sacrificing and the festivals and all of those things. But I don't see that when I read the New Testament. So, mm -hmm. so, so mm -hmm. while I appreciate it and want to learn as much as I can about it and even celebrate it, uh, I'm not bound by it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good. Another good question, though, because these are when you go back to those isms that were learned. These are mm -hmm. the things that we're confronted with when we're yeah. talking to real people. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, sir. On day -to -day, yes, sir. On a day to day basis. Yes. So mm -hmm. this all the more reason why you want to go back and understand this last covenant even more, because many folk, especially those that divorce the Old Testament from the New Testament, will take away the strength of the Messianic covenant. That, that it has those deep roots and ties of fulfillment to all those other covenants. And so while I may not be actively engaged in observing the laws of the Mosaic covenant and that, that two-way system that, that, that we were bound under in the Old Testament, all of the others are still active. I am still actively waiting on Jesus to reclaim the throne of David and to reign for a thousand years. I'm still actively yeah. waiting yeah. on God to restore uh, the same as he promised Noah, this earth and all things to their original goodness because yeah. earth is still good. So so I'm not mm. I'm not ripped apart like some are. They'll tell us that we're, you know, we bastardized the text. And in some ways they're right. Europeans have. That's one of the reasons why we have to recover our understanding of a whole council of God, which is what this course is focused on, mm -hmm. tying you to those covenants and leaning you into your new covenant so that you have great understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. So on, on the last one, I'll go through this one, but you guys are going to get much more time to go through it. It is the Messianic uh, it is the new covenant. It is our set, the second coming. It is the better covenant and it is the everlasting covenant. This one began when Jesus died in 33 AD. This one here is a royal grant. It too is granted to us, although we have to come. He said, come and follow me, pick up your cross, accept and confess. There is something that we have to do. Uh, but we are we are not the ones that are, are are making the covenant happen. He is responding to our obedience, Amen. And that obedience is salvation. It's not in the act. It's not the Old Testament obedience of following after the law. Our obedience now is believing that Christ rose from the dead and that He lives again and He lives in us. So, the symbol of these, and it's the reason why communion is so powerful for the believer. The symbol of this covenant is the bread and the cup. Every time we take that bread and that cup, we are renewing that covenant before Christ and the congregation of believers. We are reminding ourselves of every part of his sacrifice, everything that that Old Testament tells us that was happening. I, I, I do want to read uh, a couple of the scriptures. I know y'all will get a chance to read them more in depth, but let's, because we still got eight minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody pull up Jer uh, uh, Isaiah 59, 2021, 20, and somebody pull up Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. We'll just read those two. You said Jeremiah what? Jeremiah 31, verse 31 through 34. Okay, I have Jeremiah. Okay, does somebody have <laughs> Isaiah 59? Go ahead and read Jeremiah while somebody's finding Isaiah for me. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor. That's right. Yes, sir. Okay. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, 
For Ooh. I will forgive their iniquity and I remember their sin no more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man. That's Man. the opposite. Oh. You got you finna hear a whole lot of destruction in these prophets. Some of y'all just got done reading Amos and it was it took you back a little bit. We'll talk more oh. about him and the other ones. Yeah. Right oh but right here, the messianic covenant says that all that destruction that you earn that you deserve, that your waywardness and your wickedness rightfully deserve, I'm going to forgive all of them. Woo! Come on, uh, uh, Reverend Bo, finish us out with Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, 20 and 21, the Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, Oh. My, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children, and on the lips of their descendants from this time on forever, says the Lord. That's oh. powerful, 21. Huh? Endless, everlasting. So, so, but, but the, 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 the marker is the spirit. Yes. Yeah. The, the it's marker, you guys, yeah. is the spirit. Because without yeah. the spirit, we are unable to live in a space where the word is continually on our mouth. And all, all we are dealing with today is a spiritually impotent church. We, 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 we know of the spirit. We even like to get caught up in the spirit sometimes and think that's our clapping, shouting, and running around. Yeah. When, when, when the, he said the spirit would not depart from you, so in the Old Testament, the spirit would come on you to perform a task. And so that's what you see uh, when you see somebody like like David that was anointed to defeat Goliath. The spirit came on him to defeat to, to complete a task that was larger than him. This is what you see when you see somebody like uh, like Samson. You see the spirit come on him. It's what you see when Elijah was at Mount Carmel, Carmel and was able to call down fire. You see the spirit mm-hmm. on them. He Lord. said, "No longer will the spirit be on you, but the spirit will rest." with you. He will abide with you. The paraclete will come close to you. Your comforter and your helper will dwell within you, you guys. And this is the beauty of the Messianic covenant, is that now the Spirit of God, the tabernacle of God, is no longer in the temple that was torn down. Twice, I might add. Tabernacle of God is now within all of those. Who accept this new birth, this second, this second coming. So, so this, this one, this is what we're celebrating with the bread and the cup. This one was announced in 606 BC at the time of the Babylonian captivity that I just mentioned to you about. Then it was inaugurated on the, so they brought it up for the first time in 606 BC. It took another 600 and for and 39 years for it to be inaugurated uh, on the death day of Jesus. Amen. When he died on the cross, when he was crucified in 33 AD, 639 years later from the original announcement, this is when this messianic. So he gave them hope in their darkest moment while they were that. That's enough. How long this grace been, this grace line been running? While after their obedience, while they were far from God, while they were under the thumb of their oppressor, he gave them a promise while they were in captivity in Babylon. And it took 639 years for it to come to pass with Jesus' death on the cross. The beneficiary, it's enjoyed by believers spiritually now. So we cannot enjoy this messianic covenant in our flesh, to be nationally enjoyed by ethnic converted Israel at Christ's return, both spiritually and physically. So this was to be enjoyed by the new Israel, the new covenant people who came together this time, all of them by choice, because there's only one way in. You must confess with your mouth. <laughs> the Lord Jesus said, believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead and by this you shall be saved. And because of that, you use those words, uh, 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 Sister Lynn, we will be grafted in 
Mm -hmm. That original covenant agreement with yeah, Israel, yeah. that we will be his yeah. people and he will be our God. And this is where we stand. We enter, you guys, and most of us don't get it. We enter the story at this junction. Salvation for us enters yeah. this with the built on this foundation mm -hmm. from the first class till now. And, and without that foundation, we have a very hollow and a very shallow understanding of our faith and of our salvation. And if we were to be honest, that hollow and shallow understanding has been passed on to our children. Yeah. So they yep. have no, they got no foundation to stand on. So it starts one with one of us at a time. The biggest thing you will get out of this class is to understand that you need to continue to search God's scriptures. But you also will get that you need to know the things that you do stand on so that when you take your faith and give it away to your family, to your loved ones, to your Jerusalem, to your Judea, maybe even to your Samaria, to your enemies, before you get all the way across the world, right here, we are, we are to understand the covenant and bring somebody into covenant. I'm not bringing people to church. I'm not trying to just get them out of their bad situation. I'm trying to bring them into <laughs> the new covenant. Amen. <laughs> the Amen. transforming yeah. and redeeming covenant. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he says the purpose, and then we're done. B830. Is to replace the old covenant. Amen. This new covenant secures salvation, a new heart, and forgiveness for all of God's people. It includes a return to the land and peace for future converted Israel ensuring they never again lose it through disobedience. This is huge. This is one of those things that Christians struggle to process. We have more people that have walked themselves out of the church because of their backslidden state mm -hmm. and our moralistic views and teachings and frameworks of how we taught the faith, the same one that many of you raised your hand and said you were raised on, yeah, because yeah. we think that our, our disobedience can make us lose salvation. That's mm -hmm. mosaic. That, that, that's mosaic. That, that might be Abrahamic. It may even be Edenic, right? And, and, and Adamic. But that is yeah. not messianic. That is Amen. not the covenant. Amen. That we are Amen. There is Amen. no way if you truly come to Christ and confess with your mouth, believe in your heart with understanding, there is no way to lose your faith through disobedience. That's what grace is. Amen. That's Amen. the thing we celebrate. Amen. That's Amen. why everybody's hands ought to be raised high on Sunday morning, worshiping, crying, yeah. boo-hooing yeah. at the altar, mm. because you recognize that you have received a grace that is immeasurable. Mm. It ain't, I ain't preaching. I told you, I'm sorry. This teaching. Go ahead, Reverend. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been, I kept Go it ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's immeasurable. Amen. I can't lose it. No. Mm. I couldn't gain it, so I can't lose it. I couldn't buy it, so I can't mm. sell it. Man. Can't lose what I didn't get myself. Man. My God. I just don't Man. understand why some people don't get that. <laughs> because they've been raised in legalistic framework. Yes. I had a, a friend. We, we done almost lost friendship because yes. he's trying to tell me that that. He's Muslim, of course, and that yes. they prove to him. Yes. They prove. I'm like, how somebody go prove something Amen. that the Bible was not trusted? How somebody gonna prove that to you? There ain't no such thing as they can provide proof to you mm. that the Bible was wrong and it, and that somebody changed it and all this. I'm like, can't nobody provide that kind of proof. Well, <laughs> and, and most of those people are talking about copies of texts. Not never original text, never, right. never original documents. They're always talking about because most of our people, and, and here's our truth, y'all: the, the, the Muslims, the Hebrew Israelites, the Kemetic scientists, those who you know worship Horus and and go back to our Egyptian faiths and all of this. They are this identity crisis. We've been trained under white supremacy, so they have reason to have skepticism of the Christianity that many of us have been taught because it has taught us a very docile, non-revolutionary, non-transforming faith. It's taught us a conforming faith. The Bible tells me directly, be not conformed to the ways of this world. Ooh, that's be it. Trans right. 
That's right. Yeah. And so I love talking to people like that because I'll transform their image of Christ. Yeah. And, and by the time I really connect my understanding with my personal walk, you guys, we are empowered to be able to give a defense of our faith. In the meantime, don't try to defend your faith. Keep growing until you know you can defend your faith. I use Amen. people like that to practice on. It ain't that I'm worried about me converting. I like to practice my argument. So they'll come back to me and say something. I'll go study that thing and find out about it to make sure that if I run into you again, oh, I got something, I got something for you, homie. Oh, yes. What I, and, and nothing that has been said, and I have, I have listened to them and heard their reasoning, nothing that has been said has brought me to an end of my faith. No, absolutely not. Time, absolutely not. In fact, it don't make sense. <laughs> well, well, some of it does make sense when I when I when I became because I became a questioner myself. I became a questioner. I became a dissector. I became a person mm -hmm. that poked, mm -hmm. prodded, and wanted to pull the faith apart. And when I did, the deeper I pulled and prodded and went apart, the more I found Jesus. So right. I can assure you. That, that, that we too can find him. And that'll be one of the classes we teach in the future. We'll yeah. have some apologetics and how to deal with people like that and how to look at other faiths. Right now, all of us, obviously, based on what we've said, need to keep growing more firm in what we do believe as opposed to being overwhelmed mm -hmm. or too concerned with what others are trying to tell us about what they believe. And the more we learn what we believe, the more we'll be able to defend our faith, Jude 3, against the naysayers and the haters. Amen? Amen. Amen. I guess I probably should have said what he said didn't make sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's possible. Because the rest of them stuff, they get their stuff off YouTube. Some of them haven't necessarily studied. Now, you'll run into some that really are well studied, but a bunch of them are repeating stuff that somebody told them. Yeah. So so yeah. it's really easily debunked. But I tell Just like we do. I, I, that's right. That's right. Most Christians are the same way. They can't actually defend what they believe about their faith. They got it from somebody else and gain strong conviction because somebody told them it was true. Mm -hmm. So we've got to move mm -hmm. past that stage, you guys, mm -hmm. and get to the point to where we are able to stand on what we believe is true, what we know to be true. So you'll get a commentary document. There are no anniversaries this week, nothing to keep me from you. So you'll get this one on tomorrow and have multiple days to look at it. I'm going to include a couple of prophetic scriptures off in there. Since you've already read Amos, which was the one I wanted you to eat. And if you haven't read it, then you, ha you still have the Amos reading uh, that you'll need to do and the all of the covenant readings. Okay, so I want okay. you to go through each one of those scriptures and I want you to really sit with those covenants and think about what I'm saying as far as which ones carry over, which ones don't, the ones that we're still waiting on, the Mosaic covenant, its temporary nature, rest in all of that stuff so that you'll understand what, what the Jesus and his disciples were fighting against when we finally launched the New Testament church. They were still fighting against a lot of these same things. They were a sect of Judaism at first, you guys. They didn't see them as a different faith. Today, we see Christianity and Judaism as two completely different things. When Christianity started, Christianity was one of eight or ten sects of Judaism. It was just one of many. You know I mean? So, so we're, we, we need to recognize that the arguments that were coming at them were internal arguments initially. This is why you see James and, 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 and the folks from Jerusalem coming down and trying to make Paul reinstitute the circumcision and the festival, uh, 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 Sister Lynn, because they were saying they, these folks couldn't be grafted in properly unless they had actually walked out right? Some of the, the covenant commitments and the yeah. was one of them. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. they went on to expand food and dietary laws yes, which were yes. part of the festivals and some of these things. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they got that straight. The Apostle Paul was like, no, no, mm -hmm. let, me, let me take you back to the grace that God gave. So we're going to, this will be our bridge next week. We'll be talking about that bridge or Friday. We'll be talking about that bridge, the end of the Old Testament. We'll deal with Malachi uh, 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 as well, the final words of the Old Testament before the silence, so that by the time we get down to our final four classes, all of it will be New Testament. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are y'all learning anything? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot. Uh, all right. Yes, sir. So I, I want to make sure this is beneficial yes. to you guys. Mm -hmm. And my prayer is not to confuse you, but to strengthen your walk. So I pray that some of what you've learned has also strengthened you and, and challenged you as well. That, that maybe we got a lot more reading and, and studying and understanding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, do. we did. Yeah, a, 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 amen. Amen. But, amen. But, but it won't all be learned overnight. This is the mm -hmm. journey of faith. Yeah. So yes. come out of this, committing to reading one chapter a day, two yeah. chapters a day, right? Like there are ways that you can begin to consume large portions of the Bible, but it, right. it, it takes a commitment. 15, exactly. minutes, 15 minutes a day, literally, you could read multiple chapters of the Bible. Yes. In 15 to 20 minutes. So imagine yeah. what that would look like in 365 days. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so, sir. How do we bite it off? Not not focus on the fact that there's so much for me to learn, but begin the process and begin to incrementally ingest God's word. It'll mm -hmm. radically transform your life. No. Okay, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So let me pray for you. Uh mm -hmm. and we will we will include the prayers uh that were added in earlier. Nick, uh, on Friday, be prepared. You guys will be praying for one another. Okay. Okay. All right, any questions before we go? Everybody did the uh, the poll, attendance poll? Mm -hmm. Am I in there? Do you see me? I got, I got eight out of nine, so I'm not sure. I know Alexander was here earlier. Somebody has not uh, 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 selected theirs. So if you, if, you can, if you can't select it, it should be done. But if not, it, you ought to be able to make the selection if you haven't done it. Okay, my screen says poll in progress. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave it up for a minute. Uh, after, okay. I won't immediately end after the class is over. Uh, thank you, God. Y'all are troopers, too. Because y'all, we, we, <laughs> the, our classes are getting longer, and y'all staying engaged. So, so, so <laughs> this, this, Thank this, you. This, this, is closer, thank you. this is closer to the master's level. I believe it. That you have, that the real three-hour seminars. Y'all are, <laughs> are gone. I, I really want to congratulate y'all for staying engaged and, and continuing to communicate. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. mine. So, so amen. Let, let, me, let me pray for you as we go. Gracious Master, we are so thankful. Another Thank day you. of class, Father, another day of revelation, God, another day of insight into your word, another day, God, of these, your servants, hungering and thirsting after righteousness, Father, the joy yes. in their spirits, Father, the thoughtfulness in their papers, God, oh, God, just the, 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 the enthusiasm, Lord, as they learn new things about you, God, it is it's breathtaking, and I'm in awe, Lord, of you and of them, God, I thank you for this class, I thank you for the seeds that you are sowing here at our church and within the school of ministry father i thank you lord for the visionary of this school and, and, and dr ramey oh god and and our pastor who is the one who truly was thank able you. to make it happen and make provision lord for this right here inside of this kingdom body at community mbc now god i pray for each one of these students i pray for their minds i pray for clarity i pray for energy god i pray lord that you would give them the ability to block out time for themselves god and time for your word father i pray that you would remove the stress actions that would try to come against them, God. I pray against discouragement, Father, that everyone, Lord, would recognize that they are doing awesome, Lord, and that you, Father, have them right where you desire for them to be. And now, God, I ask prayer, Lord, uh, for uh, on behalf of Sister Catherine, for a friend, uh, Florence Williams, she, who's, who's struggling with MS and has not been feeling well lately. We know, God, that you are a healer, God. You've done it before, and you'll do it again. So we pray to the God, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, God, and ask that you would simply touch Sister Florence, we ask prayers right now on behalf of Sister Daphne uh, Ramey for her family as well as uh, for her sister-in-law that she get her home and, and get in uh, allow, allowance uh, with God, that you would just continue to keep your hand of blessing and favor uh, on her, God. Carry her, Lord, as only you are able to provide like we know you can, Father. We know, Lord, that you are a blessing, God, a loving God, even more loving than any of us could be on our best parenting day, and 
you desire greatness for your children, Father. So we just pray for your provision, Father, for your hand over the entire Ramey family. Keep them, bless them. This is our prayer. We pray, Father, right now uh, for Sister Sheila, uh, our Reverend Poe, Father, for godly wisdom and discernment in this season of her life, God. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless her, Lord, to know that this is the beginning, Father, that for all, Lord, that of the times that have passed, God, and ages that have gone by and life that has been lived, God, that you give him fresh wisdom, Father, for fresh and new areas of life. So touch her right now, be with her, and show her what it is in this season that you desire from her. And then we rejoice, oh God, with Sister yes. Rashad, uh, uh for her nephew, that even in temporary relief, Father, that they were able uh, just to help him to get to some form of help and relief as he is talking about threatening to commit suicide. We pray for our young people as a whole. We were talking about this at church today. We lament, God, over the state of our young people, that they would be in yes. a where suicide would be a regular option, God, where young people, Father, before they even begin to live, would not want to live anymore, God. We pray for the restoration of the image of God in each and every one of our young people, God, the ones that we're praying for directly, Brother Courtney, that we speak of right now, and every young person, God, that is connected to any of us, let the tentacles of our love and our prayers be felt like a ripple effect, Father, all throughout this area, those young and old, God, that are struggling with not knowing who you are and whose they are. God, remind them and remind them that you made them, you created them, you shaped them, you formed them with intentionality and perfection. God, touch them and bless them as only you can, Father. Remove every voice of doubt, every voice, Father, of condemnation, every voice of bitterness, Father, every voice of trauma, God, that has come from things they've experienced in the past and let them be healed, God, as they stand before the light of your word and the power of your spirit and and the prayers of your saints. Let us pray with intention and earnest for our young generation, God, as you restore them and you bring them back to life. Dry bones will live again, even this generation, Father, because you said so. We pray mm -hmm. it in your son Jesus' name. We love in you Jesus and we praise name. you. Keep us until we come together again. This is our prayer. Let the saints yes. go.